I'm going to tell you about the most seductive trait in the entire world. And if you want this, if you want the ability to attract more women than you could even handle, and that's a real problem that some men have who follow this. If you want that problem of literally having, of literally sleeping with too many girls, what you're going to need to do is listen to this video carefully and just move past your feelings of what I'm about to say, because what I'm about to say can seem a little bit cringy and even a little bit offensive and insulting. It seems to offend some people and you'll certainly cringe at what I'm about to say. Now, it's not feelings that we should prioritize, you know, feelings or whatever that they, they sway, they're fickle, right? It's results, isn't it? It's, it's not how we feel about something, it's just, it's, does it give us the result? So don't think about how you feel when you watch this video, which a lot of people do, will do, especially like feminine, modern men. Think more so about the results that you could get if you apply this. So as you watch this video, it's gonna seem cringe as fuck, you're gonna seem kind of annoyed, oh yeah, this guy's really cringy, what the fuck is this? If you listen intently to what I'm about to say, there will be a point in this video where something clicks and you'll just be dumbfounded and you'll be like, well, well, yeah. Of course. Well, yeah, that's that's all it would actually take to attract women. That's literally the secret to attracting women. Why does no one talk about this? That's literally all there is to attracting women. You will have those kinds of thoughts as you watch this video. Now, the most seductive trait in the entire world to attract women is to act, think, and become the alpha male. The alpha male is the highest man of the social hierarchy, or the highest male. In the gorilla kingdom, the gorilla tribes, what is the alpha male there? Well, it's the biggest gorilla, the strongest gorilla, and he has all the women. In the chimpanzee tribes, or whatever they call it, the group of chimpan the chimps, the alpha male is the biggest one, the strongest one, and he has all the women. In the caveman days, 10,000, 50,000 years ago, the alpha male was the biggest one, the strongest one, and he took all the women. Are you starting to see some similarities here? Now in the modern day, things are slightly different. We're very advanced. And so the alpha male of the modern day is not like, you know, the big fucking Neanderthal meathead or anything. And honestly, the real alpha males in the modern day are all in prison. We have like this enemy of, of the state of like these masculine, purely masculine men. So they're all in prison. But like the alpha male that, put, that does the best in the modern times is the intelligent alpha male. It's the intelligent man who's like went all the way up, but then who also has some characteristics of the old school, masculine, strong, sexy, muscular size traits. So it's like the guy, essentially what we need to do is level up the social hierarchy, get to the top. And the top is full of the men who not only are just intelligent and making money, but they're also doing that whilst looking like, like, like sexy men who are strong. So it's not just, you know, the Bill Gates who's really who's really rich or Jeff Bezos or something because they're really rich, but they don't reek of like masculinity. They don't reek of like sex. It's the guy who's who's made millions, who's really, really successful, but then he also looks like a man. He also walks, talks and fucks like a man. He's got um, like a six pack. He's, he's got muscle, he's got size and everything. It's like bringing both. It's very hard to be the alpha, but the process is for you to start wherever you are in the social hierarchy and move up towards the top spot. That's the most seductive thing you can ever do because when you become closer and closer to being the alpha or, or just acting like one, it triggers something primal in women and they become, they feel irresistible towards you. Now there's three major dating programs these days. You may have heard of them. There's the blue pill, the red pill, and the black pill. You may have heard of these terms before, but you don't totally know what they really mean. Now, the blue pill is the modern sort of big programmed popular script. Essentially, you're automatically blue pilled because of society, conditioning, education system, media, especially if you're in like these Western degenerate countries. The blue pill is this idea that to get girls, all you need to do is be nice. What's happened with the blue pill is that they've convinced men that the way to attract women is to be feminine. It's to be feminine, it's to open up, it's to talk about your emotions, it's that men cry, you know, they've taught these things, and I'm not like mocking like men crying or something, mental health is a serious thing, but to attract women, absolutely not. To attract women, this is, this is like a false program that's been pushed into all the young men of today. Why do you think so many young men are struggling? 
Why do you think so many young men are like messaging girls? Like you probably experienced, bro, you're messaging a girl, you're texting her, texting her, texting her, and you know, having a fun time, sending memes and stuff, and then eventually you find out she's fucking some random guy who doesn't even seem to be into her. The blue pill script does not work. And young men are waking up to this and they're angry. The red pill is this understanding that the way that men attracted women for all of humanity was the correct way, which was that men would become masculine and get more and more likely, more and more closer to being the alpha male, the top man of the social hierarchy. And so it's a competition against other guys. And how it works is that as you are, you know, a low level in the social hierarchy, like there's a lot of other guys better than you, you're totally and utterly deprived of sex. And we know this is the truth, right? The blue pill mindset is like, oh yeah, you know, you'll find someone, just wait. We kind of know that's not true. Where the red pill says like, oh yeah, if you're low down on the social hierarchy and you're not an alpha male, you're a beta male, well then you're going to be fucking lonely. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that that's, that's exactly what's happening today, isn't it? But the red pill belief is that as you become closer and closer to the alpha, you'll start to attract some women. So let's say you're really low down, you're lonely as fuck, okay? Then you start improving yourself. You get more and more like the alpha, which I'll explain exactly how to do soon. You get more and more like the alpha and you start getting some level of, of attention and attraction, but not that much. You improve more and you get a little bit more, a little bit more. You keep on improving and maybe, you know, you attract your first girlfriend and maybe you turn into like a little spurg and you get complacent next to her and you waste time and, you know, like your first ever girlfriend. Oh yeah, we're going to be together forever. We're going to name our children. And then you just start eating junk food with her, watching TV and you realize you've just been turned into a loser over the last three months. That happens. And you slip into like blue pill days. But the red pill man just keeps improving, keeps improving, keeps improving, keeps getting closer and closer to the alpha male and starts eventually getting women who just lost over him, getting women who just out of nowhere because he's not experienced this in his blue pill days, but getting women who out of nowhere just want him to fuck them. And that becomes like a nice experience. That's, you know, as a man, that's like, it might be degenerate and stuff. It is absolutely. But like, as a man, that's a fucking amazing experience to have, isn't it? To think that you are desired by women. So it keeps improving. You know, he's every now and then, maybe once every couple of months, there's a woman who seems sexually into him. Maybe he indulges in that. Maybe he doesn't, but it feels nice to have that. And then he hits a sweet point. He hits this sweet spot. He enters the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 20% of men, whatever number it is. Essentially, he, he enters the top echelon of man. He gets into like the alpha male category. Now, of course, the alpha male essentially means the top number one of the entire, you know, the entire world, but it's kind of different now that there's so many fucking humans and we're so different and everything. So it's more so that once you get to like the top 10 percent of men you're, you're in the alpha male category you're not the alpha male but you are a alpha male which doesn't exactly make sense with the definition of alpha male but it's just for our understanding here that once you get to the top 10 percent of men you're a alpha male the alpha male is probably like some billionaire who's got a six pack and everything but we don't you know what i mean it's it's too hard to imagine that you become a alpha male when you're in the top 10 percent of men and you know what's very interesting but if you've if you've experienced this yourself maybe you've not but there probably will be some guys who've experienced this sweet point. When you just cross this invisible line of getting into the top 10% of men, what happens? Previously, you were maybe sleeping with one girl every month, maybe a couple of months, maybe you, you were getting into a relationship here and there. You hit some random sweet spot by improving yourself. When it rains, it pours. Suddenly, you, you sleep with four new girls in, in, in one week. Suddenly, you're getting more Tinder matches, more DMs on, on, on Instagram that people don't even believe that you could get that much like attraction from girls. Everyone's sure that you're lying, that you're scamming them, that you know, you're know you definitely not. No, you're lying. You're, you've paid these girls, haven't you? There's no way that so many girls are... Your results with women starts to dumbfound the men around you. I remember the moment this happened to me. I went overnight from getting a couple of matches a day on Tinder, like five matches a day, to starting to get... 20 to 30 matches a day on tinder this was in like when i was 21 years old and i was in university i took some new pictures of like shirtless pictures abs out and everything and just suddenly i literally had 20 to 30 matches a day of girls like literally replying to me and everything i was going out to clubs two three times a week literally hooking up with girls there was days i was sleeping with like two three girls in one day now that was like you know my degenerate days i've moved on past that but it was an amazing experience and it, it truly formed the kind of man that i've become you hit that sweet spot, you become a alpha male. And it's like the options that you have skyrocket. You keep improving and it goes up and up and up and up. You must understand that women's attraction is kind of like compounding success. It all goes to the top man. It's all, it's exponential. How much success, like with women that you get, the more that you improve. It's like, at first you get nothing. This is what the red pill believes. At first you get nothing whilst you're a beta male. And it goes like this. It's just like normal success. It's like nothing at first, you know, very small, very small, boom. 
That's exactly what happens when it rains, it pours. That's the root of the, the red pill, of just becoming alpha. So if, if the blue pill had a phrase, it would be just be nice. If the red pill had a phrase, it would be just be alpha. Then the third sort of dating program is the black pill. And if the black pill had a phrase, it would be just be genetically gifted. Now the black pill is a new concept, like a new sort of mindset that a lot of young men have, have adopted in this dark time of how hard it is to attract women. And these men have convinced themselves that the only thing that really matters of significance to, imp to attract women is just your genetics. Because if your genetics aren't at a certain level, then no amount of self-improvement you do will actually get you the attraction of women that you want. And I won't lie to you, even though that sounds very fucking sad, it sounds very nihilistic, they are absolutely right in some areas. There is a lot of truth to the black pill. Honestly, there is a lot of truth. It wasn't very true 20 years ago, 30 years ago before, like, you know, social media and Tinder and everything, or even 10 years ago, or even like 75 years ago. But now with how like fucking competitive the the dating market has become and how you know sex obsessed western women have become and even men but like when women are promoted to be degenerate and they're told you know just have sex with no consequences and they're allowed to have sex with no problem and they can do like the walk of shame after hooking up with some guy and it's not yeah, it's just a monday well when women are allowed to fuck who they want what happens bro Think about it. What, when women are allowed with no judgment, no restraint, no religion, no God to sleep with who they want, what happens? Well, they sleep with the best guy possible. Of course they do. Who's the best guy possible? Well, bro, it's the same guy. They sleep with the same guy. How is it? You could pick out two men. One guy is 25 years old. He hasn't even kissed the girl. And the other guy could quite literally have slept with hundreds, if not thousands of women. That's how dating and sex works. So the modern dating scene is kind of fucked when there's that polarity between some guys who are so utterly deprived from sex, love and intimacy, getting no attention from women, haven't even held a woman's eye contact for fucking months or years. And another guy is sleeping with his, like, his third girl this week and he's just kind of bored with it, but yeah, he's just fucking anyway. Sounds horrible, but beta male, alpha male. So the... The Black Pill's belief is that you've got to be genetically gifted before, or at least have like decent genetics before anything else. And so their belief is that if you have like the genetics of a guy who's like less than a five out of 10, then you may as well just kind of give up and just like not think about dating, which I don't really like because I think self-improvement's still a wonderful thing to do anyway. And I think a guy who's a four out of 10 and not very tall or something, but who still builds the 10 out of 10 body, who still, you know, adopts the alpha male personality will still get some girls, which is a lot better than him just giving up and just slinking away into the darkness and just not doing anything productive with his life. Like there's progress to be made. Even for a one out of 10 disabled burn victim, there's progress to be made. And he like progress as men feels good. And I don't think that we should ever tell men that we shouldn't make progress. So the Black Pill is kind of this weird community, which I do understand, which we do see some truths in, but they hold like this just too negative, nihilistic, lazy uh, belief that men should just kind of like give up if they're past, if they're below a certain point, which is probably not the right thing. They're the three pills, blue pill, red pill, black pill, just be nice, just be alpha, just be genetically gifted. I am certain that the, the pill to take and the thing to follow to develop the most seductive trait in the world to you know attract women is the red pill. Now, a, a disclaimer I have to give is that the red pill is just a set of beliefs, but modern influencers that you see on YouTube have kind of tarnished the, the mindset, the set of beliefs that come from the red pill. So the red pill is just a set of beliefs that essentially men should act masculine and they should date and act and interact with women like they did for all of humanity where the alpha male gets most of the women, the beta males need to contribute to the tribe and level up so that eventually they can get closer to the alpha and sleep with more women themselves. That's the core component, the core belief of the red pill. But in the modern day, there's a lot of like red pill influencers, YouTubers and everything. They've kind of ruined the concept and you've probably know who I'm talking about, the kind of guys that you see on YouTube and everything. And they've just ruined it to now become like total degenerates who kind of seemingly like hate women who just, you know, like shout and everything. And it, they've kind of ruined it. But like the red pill is literally just the belief and just the action of just acting exactly how men did in terms of attracting women. 200 years ago and literally for the rest of humanity only for like the last like 50 years have men acted in a blue pill way So probably the red pill is probably right right because men didn't struggle as much 50 years ago 100 years ago When they were following like this red pill script and now the blue pill script of just being nice is kind of fucked, right? 
So we've explained them. We have, I've told you the different options. You can go and pursue if you want. I don't think you'll get any success being blue pilled unless you're already genetically gifted and it's like, you know, you're really, really fucking attractive. You're really a natural alpha anyway. Then it's like, yeah, you can be blue pilled if you want. But even then, if you're blue pilled with this thing of like, yeah, just be nice and you know, you'll find your, your sweetheart, you'll probably still get burned. Like the blue pill is a recipe to kill yourself at age 42. You get married at 30. The average man gets married at 30. The average marriage lasts 11 years. The average divorce happens at a man. It, the average divorce happens when a man is 41 and the average man kills himself at age 42. If that doesn't scare the fuck out of you when you hear that sort of timeline, because that's what happens when you follow the blue pill. The red pill teaches you that men and women are inherently different, that men are supposed to be masculine, dominant, leaders, and women are supposed to be feminine, submissive, followers. Once you learn how to become more of the alpha male and the traits that the alpha male has, you start to symbolize core masculinity. When you symbolize core masculinity, you are irresistible to feminine women. Now, masculine women will complain about this. Masculine women won't be attracted to you if you pursue the red pill. Masculine women who are like career women and dominating and, um, you know, leaders and... I don't know about you, I'm not attracted to them, right? I'm not attracted to them. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But like, when you get more masculine yourself, you start to only want to attract feminine women and you realize that masculine women are kind of against you becoming more, more alpha and speaking like this. Because if we say, for example, submissiveness is a feminine trait, that's a core fact. That's a core fact about this, the feminine energy. But masculine women will say, no, it's not, uh, you're being sexist because they don't realize like they're not submissive, not because they're women or anything. They're not submissive because they've got masculine energy. Being red pill is all just about understanding core masculine energy, core feminine energy, and probably realizing you'd probably be a lot happier if you just had core masculine energy and that comes from leveling up and becoming more of the alpha male. What happens when you become the alpha or closer to it? You start to get exactly what you know would happen. Honestly, it's, it's not a surprise. What happens when a gorilla becomes the alpha? Well, then he starts, if there's five gorillas, five female gorillas, five mas um, male gorillas, 10 gorillas total. When one gorilla becomes the alpha, he sleeps with all five of the female ones. He sleeps with all five, tries to impregnate them. And once he's done, literally like inseminating all five, then he maybe lets number two, like the, the, his right-hand man, the, the gorilla below him, sleep with the rest of them too. Maybe the right-hand man, number two, gets three of them or four of them. Maybe number three male gorilla gets like one of them. And the bottom fourth gorilla and the fifth gorilla jack off in the corner. Is that not exactly what happens in the modern day? Is that literally exactly what happens? So as you as a man, as you develop yourself and start hiring up this hierarchy, I'll explain how exactly. You start leveling up. You will literally start to just attract more women and you will have more of this personality of the alpha male. Now, you, probably you believe that, right? As you level up and you become better than men and you start getting like to the top tiers of men, you start to like just attract women just like an alpha male would. Women are just naturally attracted to the guys at the top of the social hierarchy. And that's just what alpha male means. Alpha male does not mean this big meathead, aggressive guy. It does not mean like, you know, like the... the the, the term alpha male has been tarnished by like these sort of, um, you know, weak people who, who use it as an insult to imply that some meathead steroid, steroid guy, or, you know, some aggressive guy is an alpha male. Like, not exactly. The alpha male simply just means the guy at the top of the social hierarchy. You know what's very interesting? As you level up in your position in the social hierarchy and you get better and better than other guys, your happiness and your testosterone literally increases. Your serotonin Serotonin is like this, this um, what is it? Like a, it's like a science shit of like some neurochemical or something inside of you. It's kind of like the hormone or the neurochemical for happiness or for feeling good. And your serotonin has been found to be totally correlated with your position in the social hierarchy. This is why people who are low down in the social hierarchy who have low status feel depressed and anxious. And this is why as you start to level up in the social hierarchy and you become better and better in the tribe and more important and you contribute more, you literally start to feel happier and your testosterone literally goes up. So you can see the benefits of, of leveling up in the social hierarchy and becoming more alpha seem amazing, right? So how do you do it? Hopefully you believe by now that this is what you'll get. If you level up in the social hierarchy, you become better than other men, better, 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 better. You get to this point where like, you are that guy that women desire. Like that's obvious now, isn't it? Level up in the social hierarchy and you become the guy that women desire because women desire the top men. No woman actually wants to date a loser. She might settle for one. She might settle for a beta male. But women all want the alpha. And I don't say that again. That does not mean women want like the big meathead aggressive guy or something. 
It just means that the women want the guy at the top. Of course they do. Of course they do. And they're allowed now. Religion and, and sexual restraints on women kept their desire in control. And so they usually would pair off with a guy who's very similar on level to them. Someone, a mid woman who was like, you know, mid status, mid in the social hierarchy would pair off with a guy who was mid in the social hierarchy of men. Boom, perfect. But now these women are allowed to just choose whoever they want. It's a normal, right? W women can choose who they want now. There's no like level of pressure to tell them like, oh, you've got to choose this guy or anything. They're allowed to and there's no shame or anything. So this mid-level woman, well, of course she wants the top guy. Of course she does. And what do you think is going to happen? Because this top guy wants to fuck all of these women and he will. And if you're down here, you won't get any of them. Maybe you'll get like a little pity text message back from this girl here who's just waiting for, for Chad here. But like you're... You're not going to get anything. It goes like this, like this alpha male sleeping with all these women and these bottom women aren't very desirable. And it's like all of these guys, all of these guys, like, you know, the, the bottom 80% of men are all fighting for these girls here. This is like, you know, the three out of 10 on Tinder. And I don't say that, that to be insulting, just so you can kind of, you know, think about it. The three out of 10 on Tinder is overweight, who's not even attractive. And literally 80% of guys are fighting to try and get her. Whereas the top 10% of men are literally sleeping with most of the women. That's what happens when you get into the top 10% of men. So literally your dating protocol should only be focused on getting to the top 10%. How do you level up here? How do you level up in the social hierarchy of men? It's all about providing more value and becoming just better to the tribe. Now you need to figure out what your tribe is. Perhaps if you're not very much into the internet culture, then your tribe is just gonna be the people that you work with, your family, your friends, everyone who you kind of know in your social network. Your tribe, and your social network it fucking explodes when you then hop onto Instagram, your Tinder, YouTube and stuff. Now it's like my tribe is of, of a million men. Who's at the top? I don't say this to be like obnoxious or anything, but you see my tribe, you can see the subscriber count. There's a million guys. Who's at the top? I'm not saying that to be better than anyone, but like if there's an alpha male of this channel, it's me. Of course it is. That's not me, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm alpha male, right? But of course it's common sense, right? So of my tribe, I am the alpha male. And I promise you that what I say here is from personal experience, your life gets better in every single way, your happiness, your testosterone, your ability to attract women to the point that you wouldn't even believe, honestly. If I told you some of the experiences of how women will literally like throw themselves at you once you level up and you get to that point, you wouldn't you would be sure that I was lying. You would be sure of how easy it is to like to sleep with hot, beautiful women to the point that if you've watched my story and you've watched my second channel particularly at the start of this year where I posted a bunch of videos literally complaining that I was sleeping with too many girls, that becomes your problem once you get up here because you just have this much access and it's fucking hard to have the willpower and discipline to not like sleep with the abundance of women who, who now see you as the alpha. And I'm not the alpha in like you know, the entire world, of course not. Put me in a room with Andrew Tate, Jocko Willink or something. Yeah, bro, of course, they're fucking better than me. Of course they are. I'm not saying that I'm the alpha, but in a particular tribe, I am. And so women who are in this tribe, you know, there's a million subscribers, 1.1 million subscribers. But women who are in this tribe, maybe there's 5,000, 10,000. If you're this guy or if you're like up here, you get that attraction from them. You need to find a ways to level up this hierarchy. The single greatest way is to provide value to your tribe, figure out who your tribe is and find ways that you can help them. Now in the caveman days, it was simple. We all lived in a tribe of, you know, a bit, bunch of camps or some shit, right? Or, or caves. You wanted to level up in, not really caveman days because we didn't really cooperate back then. But you know, if we talk about 2000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, let's say we're all living in little tribes with like little huts and stuff, right? And you knew all the women here and you wanted to fuck them, but you're not allowed to just like rape them or anything, right? And you wanted to be able to sleep with more women and to get more status. Well, what you do is try and help the tribe. Maybe you'd be a better hunter. You go practice early in the morning. You wake up and go practice like your fucking spear throw. And then you're the one who kills the boar. And every, all the men bring you back. They're clasping you. Yes, see, see, like uh, David got the, the, the boar. Look, he, he threw the spear, bro. The women are going to see that and literally see you fucking elevate. Then now the men respect you. You've just went up. That little Spurg next to you who didn't throw the spear, you know, he was being a bit shy today. You've literally just knocked him out of his seat. Any women that were previously attracted to him will now be attracted to you. So can you think of ways to, to provide value to your tribe? Because that's how you level up and, and get higher in the status and become of more of the alpha. Now you also do need to improve your own sort of characteristics. You need to start right now to start adopting this identity of the alpha. And it can be very fucking cringe when you first do this because you're not alpha right now. You're not. I, even I'm, I'm going to say that I'm not the alpha male. I'm a alpha male in this one particular tribe, which is very small in the, the entire world. But if you start to act like the alpha, the man of abundance, the man at the top, and without being a dick, well then sometimes people just believe it. 
So we've talked about providing value for your tribe. We've talked about acting and, you know, just having the identity of an alpha. And, you know, just keeping this in mind, like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, the alpha, I'm the alpha, I'm the alpha. Yeah, I'm going to be alpha, you know? You also then want to start developing traits which symbolize and, and just subconsciously trigger something in a woman that makes her believe that you are alpha. So there's few core masculine features that makes women think that you're up there. And the single greatest one still to this day is size, strength, and muscle. Still to this day, like obviously in the online space, you know, they, they, you don't just get judged solely on your body or anything. You can see like, you know, you can't really see my body. You can see maybe I look a little bit thick or something, but you can't really see my body. <laughs> But in person, a woman that you meet in person, bro, within a split second, she will look at you and know whether you are alpha or not, just by simply by the f size of your frame. How much do you weigh? How much do you weigh? I don't know your height, I don't know your bone structure, but I'm telling you right now, if you increase your body weight by 60 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds over the next five to 10 years whilst bulking up and resistance training. So of course, you know, some of that will be fat, but a lot of that should be muscle. You're not going to gain like 80 pounds of muscle naturally, but you know what I mean? So let's say you're, you're kind of skinny right now. You're, you're five foot nine average height and you're 150 pounds. So you're kind of skinny. Well, if you stay at the average height, five foot nine, and you get to 200 pounds five years from now, you know, you just bulk slowly. You get a little bit too fat. Then you cut down a little bit. Then you bulk. So you know what I mean? Being 200 pounds at five foot nine, bro, you will literally within a split second, give off this trait that you are way more masculine. Of course you would. Because the alpha, this is this is a very interesting like side kind of weird thing that I realized. I, this isn't scientific at all, and people are gonna crucify me for this because it's not scientific. I found that your appetite correlates with your position in hierarchy. If you found right now that oh you know I've got a really fast metabolism, I, you know it's really hard for me to eat that much, bro. Now it could be some sciencey shit, fair enough. But let's just talk about this evolutionary psychology concept. Let's who eats the most? Imagine being in a tribe and we've just hunted down a boar. What man would eat the most of the boar? What man would have first servings? Well, the alpha male. What man would eat the second most of the servings? Well, the guy just below the alpha male. What man would probably eat the least amount of the boar that we've just hunted? Well, probably the guy at the lowest, right? How much you can eat and how much you do eat probably seems to be, honestly, it seems to be perfectly correlated with your position in the social hierarchy because this is, maybe you can't relate to this, but there's probably some guys here, maybe you're one of them, who literally struggled to eat at first when you were quite a low down in the social status, you know, you were some like little nerd and you really struggled to eat to bulk or whatever. And as you leveled up and you got better grades in school, you got more confident, you built some more muscle, you start attracting more girls and you know, you've leveled up in the social hierarchy, you'll find that your ability to literally eat more correlates with this. Because it feels weird, it feels like impossible. If you're down here in social status, it feels hard to eat that much. Whereas if, when you get up here, when you get like up here, it becomes like, it, become, it feels like you're right to eat, which technically it is. So eat, build size, get bigger, get more athletic, get stronger, get muscular. Build the kind of physique that's attractive. Now, you can go with a full sort of like, you know, uh, dominant testosterone alpha male. You can get take steroids and be fucking massive. You can maybe do that. And maybe that's like, you know, maybe something you can pursue. I found personally that you don't need to be absolutely massive to be, you know, more seen like the alpha. You need to just have like this sort of aesthetic taper of your body where your upper body is shaped like this, where your shoulders are way wider than your waist. Like that symbolizes strength. When your shoulder width here is way wider then your, your waistline here. So it's like this aesthetic V taper. So the V taper in a man is like the hourglass shape in a woman. It's instantly attractive. The way to build the V taper is to bulk up, build muscle, go to the gym, train in a certain way that builds like your, your, your lats, your lateral delts, your upper chest, everything. Like train like these certain key muscles. I've got like a full program linked in the description how you can attract girls. You can maybe go look at that. Train in a way that actually builds like good fucking attractive muscle. Look strong, be strong. And that's a huge component of leveling up and being more of the alpha male, especially because one thing I've not noticed, the way to level up in the social hierarchy isn't, isn't just totally, if anything, it's not even mostly based on how women pursue you. It's actually mostly based on how men pursue you. Now, women choose, of course, with their own bias and, you know, they're more attracted to a guy who's got like the more like lean kind of physique. They're not attracted to some big meathead. But your position in the male social hierarchy and status is actually defined by other men. So you have to like find a way, this sweet spot of impressing other men and providing value to them, but also in a way that maintains or increases woman's attraction to you. So the way that you do this, for example, is get bigger, bulk up, 
take be, be just fucking bigger, have size, and men will respect you more. But then if you get too bulky, and men will respect you if you're very bulky, men will respect you more. But then women's attraction to you starts lowering. So you want to find the sweet spot where you start getting muscular, you're kind of bulky, attraction going up for each. You get a little bit too bulky, women's attraction goes down, then you start leaning down, you lose some of the, the male attraction, but the female attraction goes up. You want to start leveling up in a way that men respect you and women want to. The most seductive trait in the world is being an alpha male. It's getting closer and closer to that top spot. Anything that you can do, and honestly there's hundreds, but anything that you can do to level up here in the social hierarchy of men, and you get to this sweet spot, this top 10% spot, top 10% of men in the entire world. And it's not as hard as you think. Honestly, getting to the top 10% of men is, is actually not as hard as you think. Why? Because about 80 to 85 to 90% of men are total losers anyway. They've given up. Whilst I really feel sad for that, it's like, you've got to do what's best for you. And it's not hard to dominate the men who are still playing video games. It's not hard to dominate the men who are still watching anime. There'll be commenting below this. Maybe someone will clip this and, and a bunch of these TikTok um, anime watchers, video game players will come in. Oh, he doesn't watch it. Like, it's not hard to dominate those guys. So to be in the top 10% of men, to beat 90% of men, bro, it's not as hard as you think. Because 20% of men are literally coming on their wall. Like 20% of men literally don't even like nut in, like they fap and they don't nut into tissues. They literally just do it all over the floor in the bed sheets. The, the bottom 20% of men are fucking like, you've never seen a bottom 20%. You've never seen a wall comer before, bro. The bottom 20% of men are wall comers. That's the bottom 20%. Then from 20 to 50 is like the really weird guys. It's like, think about it, they're below average. These are the kind of weird guys who just stink. They're just weird as fuck. You barely see them out or anything. They're the kind of guys who watch porn all the time and everything. Then above the 50%, so now that was below average, 20% wall comers, 30% like weirdos, that's 50%. From 50 to like 80, it's kind of like, you know, the or let's say 50 to 70, it's kind of like the guys who just are those weirdly just normal, not even like weird weird, but they are kind of weird now because they're just like these normal kind of guys who still play some video games. They're still kind of just like, you know, just there, but they're kind of invisible and everything. Then this from, that's probably 20%, so 50 to 70%. Then maybe 70 to about 85 or 90%. It's kind of like the guys who are doing some bits, going to the gym, making some progress, getting a little bit better with talking to girls, being able to maybe approach, but just get rejected, not so confident watching videos like this and everything and then when you get to the top 10% of men bro shit changes in the top 10% bro the guys are doing everything you can't be in the top 10% and still be playing video games and I don't care oh but Elon Musk plays video shut, shut up bro it's a very different concept if you've got fucking billions yeah fine you can play video games fine but you're not a billionaire so don't bring up oh but Jeff Bezos sometimes watches anime but don't bring it up bro you're not Jeff Bezos right so the top 10% bro they're doing everything right it becomes hard to compete with these guys because they're already going to the gym they're already eating clean they're already stopped smoking weed they're already not even playing video games or watching anime they're already doing bits then when you're in the top 10 10%, this is when you're like you're getting more of an abundance than you need you're sleeping with at least one woman a week if you wanted to if you wanted to indulge in that or you're attracting some pretty hot girls now seven out of ten girl six out of ten like you know like it's not like hot hot but that's like oh wow that's you know kind of new for you if you've just been from the, the 50 60 70 percent line then when you get to the top one percent of men and you get that through literally having like a fucking nine, 10 out of 10 physique. You're making $10,000 a month, $50,000 a month, 100, you know, the, the top 1%, bro. They're, at that point, pretty much every woman you ever see is either yours or she's another guy who's at the top 1%. At that point, women with boyfriends are yours. It doesn't even matter. The stories that I've got of, of like my, my sort of fuckboy days, bro, once you get to that alpha male spot, the top 10%, the top 5%, the top 1% of men, you see the world and especially women and even other men in such a different light. And maybe you can't relate to this right now. Maybe you're so certain that, you know, I'm, I'm chatting shit that, yeah, yeah, this is all bullshit. You just need to be nice. Or you just need to be genetically gifted. There's no way, you know, maybe you're just disagreeing with me. I'm telling you right now that the men who have accomplished the journey that I speak of, We've all experienced the exact same thing. The veil gets pulled off and you see true female nature. And the interesting thing is that these men who are in the top 1%, they seemingly hate women. They seemingly seem like very misogynistic, but it's not. I don't know a single man who's in this position who seems like misogynistic or anything. You know, They seem misogynistic, but I don't know a single man who's in this position who actually is. You know why? Because once you get to this point and you've experienced enough women, you don't dislike women you just realize what they truly are you realize that they're just feminine beings that they're, they're not men the reason why so many men hate women is because we've been fed this lie that men and women are the same and that we're equals 
honestly, and I know that sounds weird, but it's like men and women are nothing. Like we are, we are not the same. Masculine and feminine energy are quite literally opposites. Once you get to this point and you realize what women are actually like, what men are actually like, you lose all level of disrespect towards women. A woman could go and cheat on you and this is the kind of man who just, yeah, well, well of course she was going to, That's, it's feminine nature. You, you lose all of that and the beliefs that you have about women at this point are widely seen as misogynistic and backwards and stuff. But when women are in their feminine, like when you're an alpha male and you're masculine and women are feminine and women want to fuck you, you see women as they've always have been, which is a level of tradition. You see women as like, yep, submissive. You see a woman who like argues and disagrees with you is quite masculine and that's not attractive anymore. And so when you kind of then go and say like, yeah, I don't like masculine dominating argumentative women, you're seen as like a misogynist, but you, you just experience what feminine energy is truly like because you become so masculine when you're in the top 1% of men. Maybe you'll never get there. Maybe you're sat here right now coping and you're ready to type in some angry shit. They're like, yep, yeah, he's got to be lying. He's, he did, yeah, Hamza, you don't get any girls. You're ugly. You can say whatever. From my experience of seeing other top 1% men, they're not what the black pill would believe. The black pill believes it's only genetics. It don't believes that you've got to be extremely facially attractive. You've got to be these TikTok boys. There's no TikTok boys in the top 1% of men. They, they might get some attrac attraction when they're 17 and 20, 21 years old. They might get some, some levels of attraction. They might be in the top 10%, but there's no TikTok boy in the top 1%. They're all just masculine guys here. And these guys have a level of abundance that you would not believe. You would not believe it at all unless you join the spot. But every other guy is trying to fight to get here. So good luck. Click on watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.